we actually do not have a problem with Pakistan if you really get down to the basics of the whole thing. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. We got into the aircraft, shut the hatches, took off. And at Bani Hall, we had two MiG-21s come up and escort us in and we landed. There was a lot of action going on because that's right, right at the base of Tiger Hill. Mm -hmm. And boom, boom, bam, bam, and blue buffers firing, and 105s firing, and 130s toward Patalik when you went that side, they were in action. He sank to the ground, he put his head on my lap, okay. and he started to stop. And then he looks up and he says, Sir, in our force, we say that the Hindu army is this, that, 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 a lot of emphasis on uh, untouchability. Yeah. You are taking my cigarette, my cigarette, and taking my cigarette. How can this happen? You are sitting there, I am sitting there. I said, what do you want to ask? I said, what do you want to ask? I said, what do you want to ask? My commander Rashid Khan was here, we went here, we went here, we went here, we blurted out the whole bloody thing. Mm. We were very careful in what we put out because we didn't want to embarrass him. Yeah. This footage was then screened on every channel. Mm. And the Pakistani Air Force sent an aircraft. Then which got held up at Palam for 24 hours for some bureaucratic tagging. And then these guys left. Mm. And when they were leaving, they used to, you know, the Indian army used to give them 35 rupees a day under the Geneva Convention for... To the prisoners? Sabul, ha, Sabul, oh. Bidi, Jovi Okay. You know, they had a small paper mache box. Mm. And as they were boarding the plane, they gave it to the sergeant there and said, he, wo, you know, they gave us a film, they gave us a film. They gave us a film. You know, when I filmed these guys, I came back home, I was like really upset. So what's the difference here? Mm. Just like our chaps. Yes. And you know, when you see them, you see when we were under fire. Yeah. We're getting a lot of people are dying left and right. And then you looked in the general direction of Pakistan and you said, bloody bastard, or whatever, you know. Yeah. But when you, now you see the other aspect of it. Yes. You yeah. realize the futility of the whole the, bloody the human thing. aspect. Absolutely. So that so, is why so I was my there. Uh, next question would be that you just mentioned that your daughters were just one year and four years old when you decided to go into the conflict zone. So, how does a war journalist prepare mentally and physically for entering a conflict zone with the risks involved and everything? I'd be very unfit. Okay. <laughs> At one day, I'm very, very overweight. Even then, I think I was quite heavy. Uh, mentally, you just go, you start thinking about it, it's not going to happen. Hmm. All right. I mean, if, if you talk to somebody, they say, how can you go? Hmm. Now, we had just moved into Beverly Park. Okay, in, in Gurgaon. In Gurgaon. Mm. And Weeha, my younger one, mm. she had taken her first few steps just mm. a few days before that. Mm. And uh, we were, we had our own swimming pool. So, we were in the pool. And uh, <laughs> I never, we were under heavy shelling in Dras. Mm. The whole place of Boom Boom, and we were sitting in the Badka. We were waiting for a direct hit. Direct hit was mm. So, we were sitting there waiting, waiting, and everybody was very tense, okay, mm. including mm. the army. And I started telling them about this swimming pool incident. Mm. So, I said, you know, guess what? Mm. We were in the pool mm. and uh, Dipti had, was holding Viha mm. while Ika was swimming around. Yeah. And uh, Dipti finally breached the subject. Mm. He says, what happens uh, if you get killed yeah. in Kargil? Mm. And before I could say anything, she said, in that case, I'll have to keep a full-time maid. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I told them this story, everybody started to laugh at the box. And the, and the, the tension just kind of evaporated. Uske yeah, baad, the Pakistani ko fire what they wanted made no bloody difference. Marna to marenge. You know, that kind of a thing. It's an attitude. Right. You can't prepare for it beyond a point. Even when I went to the Hezbollah Mujahideen, I mean, if yes. Colonel Jambal kept telling me, why are you going? Huh. And had he asked me once more, I wouldn't have gone. Right. So, it's a thin line, yeah. But... You also believe what you're doing has a meaning. You're trying to do something which you believe is good for the country. You're trying to... Do, you convince yourself. Somebody can argue with you and say, who the hell are you? You know, why you? Yes. Why this? Why that? Yes. But one did it. I was just like a of, soldier. A soldier also does it for... My dad was in the army. I was born in the army. I may not have joined the army. But, you know, these things... I mean, the country always mattered. It mattered. Actually mattered. You know, right. it was not a question of... As I said, nobody paid me for Kargil. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's but true. I went. Yeah. It's a brave thing to do. So, can you share any particular experience of yours that had a deep personal impact on you in the war and if it uh, ha had an impact on your understanding of war and its consequences, something that you recall? One thing I think Kargil really taught me was that how sick it was. Hmm. War has no place in society. Hmm, 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 hmm. You see dead bodies coming down from Tiger Hill. Hmm. We used to unwrap those bodies. Hmm. I couldn't even get myself to film it at times. I filmed one or two by you. All the men who are unwrapping. And what is the conversation? Everybody's huddled around. A dead body, 
with a hole in his head which has just been shot. Yeah. As a kind of a morbid fascination. Sab log aake khade hote hain. Nobody is saying anything. They are watching. Mm. And then they start looking at each other. Mm. From his battalion. Mm. And then you ask he, he, what's his name? So they say Nike so and so. Mm. And then without them, you are asking, they say, there are three hmm. You know, you realize that three daughters and one, you know, it's, yes. it's over. Yes. Uh, it's uh, war, war, you're getting lessons all the time. I mean, I, I uh, uh, what did I learn from the war? I think throughout that period, it was just one learning curve. So, every and war just, is in a way an anti-war experience. Oh, war any, war I think any army book, any army uh, film. Whatever, nobody can glorify this horrific thing. Yes. Uh, yet, you have to, Prepare you know, you have to because you, I mean, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a bit of a deep rooted thing. I mean, you ha- unless you fight, yes. you will, I mean, we've been subjugated for in colonialism and before that, God yes, knows, yes. so we didn't fight properly. Yes. So, you have to fight and post-independence, we've been fighting. Thank God for that because we are now a completely different country. Yes. But, the horror of war doesn't go away, mm-hmm. right? Yes. It's the soldier who pays for it, yeah. That's why, you know, we do military history in Wellam Boys. You've been a part of that yes. with me. Why do we do it? When we initially introduced it, one of the former headmasters, Mr. Dave Lai, he actually wrote in, on Facebook, he says, you guys are trying to make it a military school, this, that, jingoism, this, that. I, 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 I rang him up. I said, sir, you couldn't get it more wrong. Hmm. We want them to understand what war is about. Hmm. We want them to understand how you're manipulated into going into this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And we want them to understand exactly what the armed forces is doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, once you have an informed audience, it's less, it's difficult for you to manipulate them. Correct, correct. Of course, you don't expect one sem- uh, seminar in a school or whatever to, to change the change mind. But, but yes. at least you are throwing those pebbles in the pond. Correct. And the ripple effect, who knows where it will go. So, uh, Kargil was also the first war that was televised live into our drawing rooms, thanks to sat phones and the gizmos that had come with the, uh, with the media by that time. And a similar uh, war was the Vietnam War, which was in the 70s played out in the drawing rooms in America and it had a deep impact on the public opinion in America, the anti-war sentiment. Journalists like Neil Sheehan had uncovered the Pentagon Papers, which laid bare the duplicities of the government related to the war and those things. How do you think the televising of the Kargil War impacted public opinion in India, both nationally and internationally? Did it make a difference? I think your question already answers that in a way, because, you know, guy like Sidney Shangberg in, 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 in Cambodia. Yeah. They made the killing fields. Right. And in 71, he was with my dad's battalion. Okay. In uh, from Dhaka to when they were moving in and up to the Battle of. Okay. He's written that wonderful little thing which a lot of generals now quote. Yeah. For the Indian Army being different and you know how the men were this that, which, right. which is absolutely true. Right. Uh, how do you, you know, you, you remember that photograph of that girl running naked after yes, the napalm the attack, yes, and that Vietnam that swung the entire. Yes, sentiment. The sentiment of the war. Kargil war, unfortunately, in my my my, my humble view, was that initially I think uh, we went a little overboard, but mm. it was it was important. Mm. Um, also, most of the journalists, mm. due respect to them, I mean, you know, I had helicopters, so I can you know, I can't really afford to talk. I yeah. probably wouldn't have got to half the places where I did otherwise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One thing during the Kargil war, yeah, and I had written about the sixty-two war, which was a complete disaster. Correct. Subsequently, yes. But in the Kargil War, yeah, not one man hmm. or woman. Hmm. The women were mainly journalists because that time the army had very few. Correct. We had a couple, but I mean a few here and there. But yes, otherwise, yes. Not one individual, hmm. whether he was a soldier, hmm. whether he was a airman, hmm. whether he was a civilian truck driver, hmm. whether he was a Ladakhi porter. Hmm. Everybody is moving forward. Hmm. And you are under artillery fire. Mm. They are firing from 28, 30 kilometers away. It's a lottery. Yeah. Oh, gola to chala, ek minute pehle run, dead minute pehle. Exactly. Aake sirpe ke rega, yuk khatam hoga. And you, you yeah. people are blown to bits. You won't even know what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, they say the shell which gets you is the one you don't hear. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. it was an incredible experience to see everybody on the move mm-hmm. forward. Right. Mm-hmm. Television channels, which which initially came in, mm. were all hanging around between Gumri mm. and up till about, they were getting, very few were getting to Kargil also, let's be honest. They were okay. getting till about Dras, where all the action was happening on the, you know, Toroling Yevo. Mm. But 
तो फुटेज इज उस कमिंग आउट गन्स फायरिंग गन्स फायरिंग गन्स फायरिंग गन्स फायरिंग और कुछ ना कुछ दिखेगा भी नहीं यू नो वो मूवी यू नो एवरीथिंग इज कंप्रेस यस रियल टाइम देयर टाइम में नथिंग इज हैपनिंग ट्रू यू सिटिंग इन द मिडल ऑफ अ रेजिंग वॉर बट मे बी नथिंग इज हैपनिंग राइट योर एरिया राइट नाउ सो सो दैट वे बट सो सम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट्स आई हैड आई शुड आल्सो गेट टू सी देम आई फेल्ट वो बीइंग अ लिटिल यू नो दे वर यूजुअली वांटिंग टू अपीयर एज दे आर right there in the thick of things yeah they were yeah. but they were more on the peripheral side slight exaggerations but and what started to happen was it started to crystallize into some sort of a ani for example mm. fantastic job pti all these guys were very good mm. uh, the reports started to stabilize after a while the, i think we got a fairly good idea of what the hell was actually happening okay in the war mm. uh, i've seen the footage later mm. as to what all it was part of what yeah. we were analyzing that yeah and uh, the media played an absolutely fantastic role yeah. uh, of course there's the odd guy here and there I, but we did have a few incidents as as you know i mean there was the we'll come but, to that uh, so yeah. my next question to you would be that how did the indian government and the military authorities handle the media coverage and were there any restrictions or challenges you faced or restrictions placed on you in terms of what you could or could not do see when the war broke out it's now sounds very weird because you see so much material on on whatsapp and everything that's in the very little footage yeah yeah and uh, doordarshan actually I, my my uh, green flash film started with a shot it's mm-hmm. a beautiful shot mm-hmm. where the nishan toli the the color party is marching with the ima and the indian flag yeah and they go right past these guys and it's a wide angle it's a slightly fish eye lens so you can see the you know and all the gcs that that's you know salami shastra and all that. So the camera goes there, and then the camera, the the the, the Nishan Toli pivots, right? And they're giving the commands. You know, Nishan Toli, die, die, cut, 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 boots you know, all the passy got pre. Yeah. And they one single shot. Hmm. And on that, I had superimposed Shami Narang's voice hmm. with uh, uh, Arjun and Krishna. I mean, he says, "Hey, Bharat Panchi, uh, you stand up and fight." When he talks about, you know, just four lines. Yes. Now, dude, I didn't actually clip that out of the film. Asked the army for some somebody without asking me even clipped it out, gave it to them, and Doordarshan News used to start with that. So I got to know about this. I mean, I saw it. I hear, "Arey, what happened to this wife film?" Yeah. Now, why did we? The film hadn't been released at that point. Oh, it had been released, but not yet been commercially put out or whatever. Okay. Anyway, we were effort go for it. Hmm. The Indian government, I think, were did a very sensible thing. Okay. They did not try to put any restrictions. Okay. This was Anna's job. We'll help you. And uh, the ADGPI wing at that time, mm. the army leader was there. Was relatively it was in existence, but it really hadn't been used. Okay. And then they uh, they posted uh, a lieutenant general there, General mm. Arjun Ray, mm. who was also had commanded the same battalion as my dad. Right. My dad had brought him into that unit. Okay. He did a wonderful job. He had a very good uh, liaison with all. See, the media is at various levels. Yeah. You're dealing with embassies. You know, it's a it's a it's a question of information flow. Yeah. And the other side is also giving you a lot of information. Hmm. But unfortunately, I don't think the Pakistanis were not quite prepared for it. And I think our media completely swamped the scene. Okay. And I think the one policy the Indian media, the government of India adopted, hmm. they did not try to interfere. So what basically came out was 99 percent, was 95 to 99 percent true. Yeah. Okay. अपने आप हो जाता है यू डोंट हैव टू इम्पोज सेंसरशिप आप सेंसरशिप डालोगे ना इट ऑलवेज बमोमराइंग ऑन यू सो दिस वे वी एट यू नो एवरी इंडियन आउट दैट वर डूइंग अ जॉब इंक्लूडिंग मीडिया दैट्स ग्रेट सो इन हिंदुस्तानी यू आल्सो मेंशन एन इंसिडेंट इन्वॉल्विंग बरखा दात व्हिच लेड टू काउंटर बंबार्डमेंट व्हेन शी वाज रिपोर्टिंग एंड दैट ब्रिंग्स टू मी द थॉट दैट शुड देयर बी एनी फॉर्मल ट्रेनिंग फॉर वॉर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट्स और इज देयर अ मेथड बाय व्हिच वन बिकम्स अ वॉर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट एंड कुड सच एन इंसिडेंट हैव बीन अवॉइडेड गिवन सम सी देयर इज अ लॉट ऑन दिस बरखा इशू ओके हां नाउ आई वाज देयर आई सॉ व्हाट हैपेंड या अम लेट मी पुट एज मच ऑफ द रिकॉर्ड स्टेट एज आई कैन राइट शी इज अ फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन लेट मी आल्सो से दैट या a uh, friend in the sense that uh, i've interacted with her a few times in the recent years right uh, during the kargil war i knew who she was hmm. her mother used to be my colleague in india today okay in fact when she passed away her mother was also uh, she is she, she is the first indian war correspondent from the 65 war okay pratibha 
that and she's sitting on top of this three ton and hey, she did a very good job. She she landed up with three cavalry, all those photographs are hers. Okay. So here was Barkha and I had never spoken to her. I saw her at her mother's funeral for the first time. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. so when I met when I was in this place, uh, 52 de- Brigade, yeah. uh, she there was a Colonel Saab who was rather enamored by all the uh, big names which are coming. Right, right. And uh, in fact, he kicked me out of my bunker. He said, there's a lady coming. You have to sit in the tent. There's shelling going on. You have to sit in the tent. Mm-hmm. So anyway, she came and mm-hmm. all that is there. Mm-hmm. Now, I know for a fact that Barkha was not reporting live. Okay. I mean, she was reporting live, but she was not being broadcast live. Right. She had a sat phone. Right. All right. We did not have the technology at that time to, to broadcast live from Karkar. Directly from the... Unless we had ob and something, yeah. which she did. All right. She had this cameraman with her mm. who was taking the shot. She put on this helmet and all that. She, unfortunately, they put on the light, which gave the other guys a... This thing and that allowed for the CB to come and there were casualties. There's no denying that. The counter bombardment. She has, she, she talks about this, that and the other around it. But she, she's also actually uh, taken it on in her book, mm. short lines, in her opening lines. Okay. But she makes a statement there that she actually quotes a very senior Indian Army officer mm. to kind of exonerate herself. She says everybody had sat phones. Mm. That's a lie. Okay. Nobody had sat phones. Okay. Except the and they were not NDTV that time. They were Star, Sony, Star, Star TV. Star TV. Vikram uh, Chandra had one because I know it. Because I used it to speak to my wife. Okay. And I know she had one. Hmm. Right. So she had the mic and the uh, sat phone in her thing. And right. she broadcasted, yes, this is where got tiger and attack, blah, 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 blah. Huh. Now, there was a time lapse between of a few, maybe a minute or even. Okay. Now, now, but the story, what I'm, ta- what I'm saying is important. Yeah. The decision to go... Now, it virtually live because mm. But those guys in Delhi who were, who received this report mm. took the call to put it on the air. Right. Were not Barkha. Right. 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 Now, so this that Barkha reported and she did this, she did. So she the it was an edit it was an editorial decision on the other end. Who was on the other end? You can guess. All right. But that decision was not hers. Mm-hmm. All right. And she has tried to say that here and there. And I know she's telling the truth on this particular mm-hmm. matter. Uh, uh, there was a fallout of this because mm-hmm. what happened was, and I've written about it in my Siachin book and I've again in Hindustani. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was the 6th or 7th of July mm-hmm. when uh, a helicopter had come for me. There was a brigade sub on board because that day the General Viru Badwar could not accompany me. Mm-hmm. And I had walked up to the helicopter. When I realized I had picked up General Viru Bardwar's uh, parka. Okay. It used to happen quite often. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would have them with the general splashes mm-hmm. and he'd be, my jacket was similar. Mm-hmm. So people would get very confused okay. when we were landing. They'd see my flashes with me and <laughs> they don't know who the hell to salute because the actual guy is on the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's on the lighter side. Mm-hmm. So when there was a slight delay, mm-hmm. uh, when I, I went back to get my, so the Colonel GS, Colonel of Tar Singh, comes mm-hmm. running out with a signal. Mm-hmm. And he says, the entire media has been kicked out of Kargil. Hmm. So I said, what for? Hmm. And I said, does it apply to me? He said, especially for you. Oh, I don't know what he... Because Maybe the previous day, ah. Raghu Rai had come and got into an altercation with this guy and I had taken Raghu's side. So Raghu he <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm going to get out of here. Right. So I said, okay. So I told these guys, put the door back. Hmm. And that morning itself, my television, my my crew, hmm. I had a driver, everything. He said, sir, we will die here. We will not die here. We have been here for 10 days. अब चलो ना अगर टांगवा मुड़ गई तो मर गए तो ठीक है टांगवा मुड़ गई तो कोई हमसे पूछेगा नहीं बोलेंगे तुम्हारी ऑथराइजेशन का है ये का है वो का हम क्या करेंगे सो आई जस्ट गिवन देम अ पेप टॉक अबाउट कंट्री एंड दिस दैट एंड द अदर सडनली आई एम हैविंग टू लीव सो आई टोल्ड माय क्रू आई सेड यू विल नॉट मूव फ्रॉम हियर ऑल राइट इवन इफ आई रिंग यू अप विद माय वॉइस समबडी मे बी पुटिंग अ गन ऑन माय हेड एंड सेइंग मूव आउट ऑफ कारगिल यू विल नॉट मूव टिल आई एम फिजिकली बैक एंड आई विल बी बैक ओके सो आई गॉट टू द हेलीकॉप्टर एंड वी टुक ऑफ and we refueled at Mughalpura and then Zojila closes around 12. It becomes, it doesn't close, but it does become very difficult yeah, to. Yeah, pass through. So when we landed at uh, Badami Bagh, there was mm. another helicopter which just landed ahead of me. Mm. Rotors were still going round. Mm. Okay. And I could see Ved Malik, General, General Ved Malik, the mm. chief, uh, Kishinpal, the mm. core commander, mm. Lieutenant General Kishinpal, yes. and Arjun Ray, Lieutenant mm. General Arjun Ray, in a huddle. Mm. So when I got out, I was fuming here. I said, what the hell are you done? Why have you kicked out the journalists? Mm. So I started to walk towards Arjun Ray and Arjun Ray came, comes toward me and he had a file in his hand. Hmm. 
and he showed it to me. Hmm. And he said, see, this is the transcript of the uh, Star TV, uh, Star News uh, hmm. thing which the Pakistanis have also got and the hmm. chief has lived, etc., etc. Hmm. And he has given orders to throw everybody out. Hmm. I said, sir, what are you doing? You, I mean, you know, Jobi Kiyal, okay, this happened in the fog of war. You have to, and in any case, hmm. Hmm. the fact that the lady in question knew what had happened, she had been given that information by the deputy. Hmm. And I said, the buck stops with the chief, okay, so let's not be too this thing about it. Hmm. There's been a security lapse at your end, it's somehow gone through, people have died. Hmm. But now don't take it out on the entire press, press set. Hmm. So, I, I was actually trying to speak to General Vez Malik, who was looking at me, but I, he, so Arjun Vez said, Kunal, you go to your, there's a hut just across the, there's a golf hut and another, you go there, go there and talk to the chief. Hmm. So, he walked across, it all was happening 10 paces, yeah, we, we were talking through each other and, uh, so, me and the pilots, hmm. I had two pilots with me, Major Rajiv Day and Zulfi Kar, Captain Zulfi. Okay. So, we started walking towards that heart. Hmm. When that field telephone rings, hmm. okay, now it's very funny talking on a field telephone, you can see the other person okay. sitting 30 meters away. Yeah. So, he, Arjun Ray says, I've spoken to the chief, the chief has agreed, we are, we are withdrawing the order hmm. right now, hmm. right now, hmm. and you can go back. So, I immediately told these pilots, come on, resume, back we go. Hmm. He says, Sir, just look at yourself. You're stinking so bad, it's almost an embarrassment to climb. You know, you to fly you around, you're looking like a buggy. Nalo thoda. Kal subar subar, first light we'll leave. Okay. So I went to my room mm. and uh, I, they gave me fresh sheets. Mm. I had a beautiful room. I I uh, I slept mm. that night without expecting to be blown apart. Mm. And uh, I also wrote the dispatch for statesman that night called the mouse trap. Okay. And uh, which was very well received apparently. Then I Early morning we flew back hmm. and all the, so by the time my evacuation from there and coming down and con telling General Ved Malik. Yeah. General, General Ved Malik is a wonderful chief, okay, wonderful hmm. human being. Hmm. His man management, you can't get better. He, he's got a very good weekend with everyone. Hmm. Whatever he was doing, hmm. he knew how to carry his stuff. Hmm. So, anyway, very, it takes a lot to ruffle him. Okay. But this incident had because, you know, we had lost people. Yeah. But let me put it this way, because mm. in my perception mm. and my understanding, and I'm not saying that because I, I consider Varka to be a friend or whatever. I think it was a mistake. Mm. And I don't think it should really be held against her beyond a point. Mm. Because the decision to broadcast live, mm. <coughs> I know whose decision it was. Mm. I'm not going to say, but the, uh, the fact is it wasn't hers. So my question still remains, is there now a formal SOP for war correspondents and is there formal training for war correspondents? How does, I believe the army has some setup in Mao where they train you and is that? <laughs> Let's not go down that light. Okay. I was, I was called to Mao hmm. to be part of this army. Army thinks in a certain way, all right. Okay. So, pe, what do they call it? Media perception, right? I mean, no, perception management. Okay. Oh, what the hell are you trying to do? You, you bring in journalists and you say, you're going to manage your perception. Mm. Every journalist is going to rebel. Yeah. Mm. They'll sit through the whole thing. Because yeah. you're getting yeah. goodies and all that, it'll be very happy. Yeah. But he's sitting there saying, Kya, what, what is he trying to tell us? Has a, it had a very negative thing. I, we, I was part of this, uh, Notanki, before the, we had brought in about 35 officers from Sri Lanka. Mm. Before Premadasa went in for the perch. Mm. They came to Mao. Mm. And Mahape, I was asked to go and address them as to how to do this and all that because of the Kargil war experience. Mm. And with me was the, the former ADGP. I was then a left in general. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was looking at him and saying, come on, so give it, give it a break. Mm. You have to, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't manipulate journalists here. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is the second part of your question. Mm. You need to educate them. Mm. Right? War correspondents in India, mm. in my opinion, mm are way short of where they should be. Hmm. And there are two, there are two problems here. Hmm. One is, some are ex-army, hmm. some are of relatively junior rank, some are senior, whatever. Hmm. Few television exposures, hmm. they become celebrities. Our country, we start treating them, Are you know, this guy was on TV, you know. Yeah, yeah. That guy may have known when he when he went on TV initially, he talked about let's say he was an AD when he was serving in Nagaland or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, 54 days or whatever, he was in Hyderabad. So he would speak around that. But mm -hmm. now he starts seeing himself. Mm -hmm. See, even in the army, nobody knows that. One thing I know, having written the 62 book, 65 book, and God knows how many movies, mm -hmm. is how little I know about the armed forces actually. Yeah. And you know, because it's a it's a it's a constantly evolving thing. And True. you have to keep yourself abreast. True. And even then. 
it's such a complex issue that you can never think that you are an expert. There are no such thing as an expert in defense. Right, right. Unfortunately, a lot of these people start considering themselves as being the holy grail. Yeah. Mm. And they start pontificating. That is that is what. Mm. Second is the civilian lot who are coming. They are mm. desperate to educate themselves. Right. right. Now, I'll give you one example. There's a guy called Vahe Guru, mm. you know, WPS Sidhu. He will be in India today. Mm. Very good, very good character. Excellent chap. Mm. But he, he, in India, there were simply no avenues for him to trade further. So he got picked up. He went off to the US, Harvard, Harvard, God knows where he was. Mm. Joined some US think tank after that. And you see, there, Vahasi Likra, Kahi Koi Kahasi Likra. The problem is in India, mm. we have not been able to keep abreast in or, or creating a good school of war correspondence in India. So all our journalist, uh, journalism departments in the universities and the defense departments in the universities are not having a comprehensive. I'm not really qualified to say exactly what they're doing because I'm not aware. Right. But like, for example, I was called to the Punjab University in Chandigarh by uh, the uh, vice chancellor at that time. Mm. And I was introduced to 18 or 19 students, mm. out of which I think 14 were girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were all doing their PhD mm. from China. Mm. And uh, I was asked to speak to them informally like this. And I said, uh, well, how many, you know, so good, I'm really glad. Tell me how many countries has China got a border with? I, that's the kind of question which is like competition, success, yes, you know, how many yeah, states yeah. are there? They, they couldn't answer it. Yeah. And then I realized that actually, then they said, so I'm focused on this. I'm focused. But you know, focused on what? Yeah. How can you be an expert on China and only be looking at a aspect of the yeah, whole thing? Yeah. It doesn't work. Yet. Exactly. We need we need a good war correspondence school where we can actually and their military history everything comes into play hmm. because unless you know the history, that's right. You can't join the dots. And in India's case, it's even more complex because our history is like oh, it's, it's, it's just it's ocean. humongous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, hmm. so, Iraq, yes, it would take 10 times the effort. Yeah. But the Western countries, because you know, the World War II, they, they are focused on their issues. The theaters of operations have always been, hmm. you know, if it's France, they know, you know, World War II, World War One, BAE. So, hmm. it's hmm. You can't, you really don't even know your own history. Okay. I mean, have, you know, one of the things we are now working on is the so illustrated military history. A related India, question got, that comes to my mind from this is how do. Uh, war correspondents or your fellow journalist maintain accuracy and credibility in the fog of war when so many things are happening, there's chaos all around. How do you ensure that that, that reporting is accurate and credible? So we had slammed ourselves into the wall like that and one shell exploded near us 30 meters away. Pakistanis looked at the the raising of 28 division with a lot of alarm. Pakistanis and the Chinese and everybody has to realize mm -hmm. these boundaries are meaningless yeah. in the long run, yeah. right? Yeah. We've got one planet here. Yeah. Bad intelligence, bad assumptions. I've, I've openly said in the book that uh, Blue Star was a bossed up operation.